Okay, so we're going to take, uh, this, by the way, this is section 3.2. If you're following the textbook, it's page 80 to 95, and we're talking about revenue and expense accounts. Basically, you guys, we are taking what we know about expenses and revenues, and we're now we're going to put them into transaction analysis. So just like we did make T-charts for assets, liabilities, and capital, we're now going to talk about revenue and expenses. And this is an area where sometimes people get really quite confused on, so I'm going to try to do it as slowly as I can but without boring you half to death. Okay, so just a reminder that on a balance sheet, you will find your assets, your liabilities, your owner's equity. On an income statement, you will find your revenue and your expenses. We've talked about revenue expenses, we've talked about expense, expense accounts, so you already know about those. From our other section, we've already learned about the T accounts for assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. So if I like to do it this way. Okay, just as a quick reminder before we take it up a notch here. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing now for revenue and expenses. I want, we're going to, basically revenue and expenses falls underneath the umbrella of owner's equity. Owner's equity has a normal credit balance. Any increase is going to go on the credit side, any decrease is going to go on the, on the debit side. If we are wanting to increase, if we think about our revenue, our revenue is going to increase our owner's equity. So if, we're, if we extend this, do you agree that our revenue is going to be found on the credit side of our owner's equity? Because it's going to increase our capital. Our expenses, however, bring down our owner's equity or our capital. So expenses are going to be found on the debit side. So therefore, our revenue is going to have a normal credit balance. It's going to increase on this side. It's going to decrease on this side. Our expenses are going to have a normal debit balance. If we're increasing in expense, it's going to go here. If it's decreasing, it's going to go here. Okay, so this is another diagram that the textbook uses. Basically, what I've just finished doing, but I put everything underneath the owner's equity umbrella. Okay, why do we have revenue and expense accounts? Basically, when you are an owner of a business, you want to make sure you know exactly where you're spending your money and where you're earning your money. So if you are having a really expensive telephone bill, if you were to clump those all underneath an expense account, but not separate them with other telephone bills, you would have no idea what you paid in telephone. Use your telephone. Maybe it's something your company can get rid of. Maybe go just to the cell phone and get rid of a landline. So basically, it's just so that you can make really good informed decisions to make sure your company is running to its full capacity. Okay, so we're going to do our transaction analysis just like we did with assets, liabilities, and capital. So we're just going to go through a couple transactions and see how you do. Received $175 cash from a client for drawing up a new will. So you are, it looks like you're a lawyer maybe, and that's how you're earning your money. So your revenue account is called fees earned. That's a type of revenue. And your cash is involved. Cash has a normal debit, fees earned has a normal credit. Your cash is going up 175 on the same side as this star and your fees earned is going up 175. That's how come you're on the same side as this star. Second transaction, build client $1,200 for legal services to close the purchase of a home. So you're billing your customer, that's accounts receivable with a normal debit balance, and you're earning money, which is your fees earned, and it has a normal credit balance. Your uh, accounts receivable is going up $1,200, so you're on the same side, and your fees earned is going up $1,200, so you're on the same side as the star. 
Received $600 from a client as partial payment of the $1,200 billed on July 2nd. So it's a carry over from your last transaction. Your cash is being involved and so is your accounts receivable. Your cash is going up $600. Your accounts receivable is going down $600. And if we were to put the stars in, it would look like this. And then just a reminder again to make sure you have a debit and a credit, which you do. Okay, paid $95 to TELUS for the telephone bill received today. So remember that each expense has to have its own expense account. So we call this a telephone expense. We call this cash, of course. Telephone expense has a normal debit balance. Anytime you pay an expense, you are increasing your expense account. You think of, a, of an expense account as a basket. And anytime you pay a bill, you're putting a bill into the basket. So it is increasing. That's how come it's $95 on this side. Your cash is decreasing, so you're on the opposite side. Received a bill from the Calgary Herald for 150 for advertising, the new location of the practice. The terms of the payment allow 30 days to pay. So you're not paying cash, you're using your advertising expense and your account's payable. If we put our stars in, it's going to look like this. Accounts payable is increasing 150 and you're putting a bill in your advertising expense basket. Your expense account is increasing as well. Another transaction, paid 100 to the Calgary Herald as partial payment of the bill for 150 received on July 5th. So you've done ones like this before. Your account's payable. You are paying $100. So it's decreasing and your cash is also decreasing. Okay, and so now those are, I gave you one example of every type of question you're going to come across. Just a reminder that when you're reporting on a balance sheet, you only report your assets, your liabilities, and your owner's equity. However, on an income statement, you are going to be re reporting your expenses and your revenue. Okay, the last thing I have to talk to you about are owner's drawing account. An owner is not considered an employee, of the, but yet they still need to get paid. So when an owner gets paid, they use an account called owner's drawing. They are drawing either money or sometimes even uh, merchandise from your company. Owner's drawing account is considered um, on the, you, do, you use it on a balance sheet, however, it operates just like an expense account. And I think I have an example here for you. So, um, C. Piccolo Drawings, so this is his account. It has a normal debit balance because it's bringing down the capital. So if you are taking drawings out, you're going to put it here. If yeah, and then you'll never actually use the credit side of this because you, you're, when you put money in, it's going to actually go to your capital account. Okay? So there's four ways, like I've already talked about, that you can draw. You can draw cash out. You can draw merchandise. You can take equipment. Or you can use your company funds for personal expenses, like your, your owner's fam family or whatnot. Okay, so here's an example. On October 15th, for example, C. Piccolo, the owner, withdrew $1,000 cash from the business for personal use. Drawings account is like an expense account. It has a normal debit balance. Cash has a normal debit balance. Your drawings is going up. You're drawing more money out. Your cash is going down $1,000. Okay. So when you put it all together, this is what it looks like now. You have your assets, this is it's kind of small, this is your balance sheet, you have your assets, your liabilities, your owner's equity. This is your income statement, on your income statement you have your revenue and you have your expenses. Notice how so, what some of these expenses are, rent expense, salaries expense, advertising expense, delivery expense, hydro expense is your power, and miscellaneous expense. In Canada, we would probably use, instead of hydro, we would say maybe utilities expense, where you'd put your power, your water, so and so forth. 
Okay. Um, we're going to change up how we do a balance sheet a little bit. And I want to talk about owner's equity. Because now, when we first talk, talked about owner's equity, we only talked about assets, liabilities. Now, we've also learned about drawings, and we've learned about net income and net loss. So if you are wanting to find your new owner's equity, you take what you started with in the beginning of the month, which is $20,000. We had a net income, for example, say 3000 and you had a drawing of 1000 So for this month, you actually only had an increase in capital of $2,000. So now your new owner's equity or capital is going to be 22000 because you're going to add these two together. Okay, so that's just a more detailed way of finding your owner's equity now. Okay. If we would have had a net loss, say for instance like this, say you started with 22000 you had a net income of 1000 but you drew out 1500 we would then have a decrease in capital of 500 and you need to subtract those two to find your new capital of 21,500. Okay, so I think you understand what's happening there. I'm going to show you a new kind of balance sheet. I think that if I remember correctly, this one's called the report form balance sheet. And instead of having a left side and a right side, you have a top and a bottom. So you're, you're going to use this first column as kind of your listing of all of your amounts. Same with this one, I guess. This one is going to be your totals. So you have your assets, you list them all. Single underline to show that you're adding. That's your total assets. Liabilities done exactly the same way. You list them all, you single underline. You are going to total them over there. The owner's equity, though, is going to be a little more detailed. So you're going to do this like I just showed you, where you list your original capital, your net income, or in some case, net loss, your drawing. You're going to show either your increase or your decrease in capital. And then in this case, you had a net income, you had an increase. You're going to add these two numbers together to get this one. Okay, and then to find your total here, you add these two together. Okay, so this balance sheet is actually a little more detailed than the standard one that we started the course off with. Okay, so this one's called the report form balance sheet. Okay, and then same thing if you want to do a trial balance, like we've already talked about, it's going to look like this. Okay, we've talked about that. And then finally, if you want to make an income statement, and remember, only your revenue and your expenses are going on here, it's going to be done exactly like we learned in our last section. Okay, remembering important to use the word either net income or net loss there as well. Okay, then your balance sheet looks like this. Okay, so I think we're good here. Uh, just to review here, we're counting standards and key concepts we've talked about. I'm not going to cover them because I already have, but if you need to go back and review them, you can find that in your textbook.